Hi, Murrow Kooks, and welcome to another episode of Murrow Minutes Goes Virtual for the Fall 2020 semester. My name is Mackenzie Johnson, and I am the Recruitment Coordinator for the Murrow College, and we are really excited for you to join us today as we talk about some of the technology programs that you guys are using this semester and in future semesters. Um, I am joined today by our student ambassadors, Katie, Jane, Ariel, and Cameron, who are going to actually uh, share their screens and show you what they're using this semester as we all go virtual. Um, something that's kind of important to keep in mind is that the Murrow College has always been really involved in these online programs. So even when we're not virtual, you'll probably end up using these programs in your classes in the future. So um, we're going to go over four specific platforms today. Um, but then at the end, I'm going to share some resources for those of you that maybe are using some different programs or have additional questions. So um, feel free to use the timestamps on this video to jump between what platforms you want to learn more about. Um, my resources, like I said, will be posted at the end. But other than that, I want to dive right in and give you guys a chance to learn some more about these about these um, technology platforms. So, uh, Katie, I am going to turn it over to you first, and I think you're going to share a little bit about Blackboard. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name, like McKinley said, is Katie Duncan, and I'm a senior. I'm going to be taking you guys through Blackboard um, during this video. That is going to be a lot of where your classes are just, that's their home base for um, a great majority here at WSU as well as Murrow. So I'm going to share my screen. So um, the web page you're going to go to to even get to Blackboard is going to be learn.wsu.edu. That is where, this is the screen it'll pull up. Um, this is where you're going to want to be. So once you get there, you're going to click WSU authentic authentication. Sorry, can't say that word. Um, and this, in normal circumstances, would take you to your um, WSU ID. So to log in, you're going to use um, whatever your ID is for WSU. So um, whatever username and password that you use, that is the same for Blackboard. Uh, this is what your Blackboard space is going to look like right when you log in. Um, as you can see right here in the middle is my announcements. It is broken down by class and what announcements they have posted. These are just whatever the newest announcements are for that day or depending on how many announcements, they just kind of cycle out as there's new ones. Over here on the left, we have just a basic toolbar. So again, this is another tab to get to your announcements. Your calendar, this is a really good place. Blackboard puts all your assignments together. So if your instructors have um, enabled that, then your assignments will be there. Um, your grades, this will take you to a list of all of your classes, all of your grades, which that is very important, among with other things. As you scroll down, you're going to see my courses. So this is where the classes you're enrolled in are going to be, and this is how you're going to get to those home pages that your professors are always talking about. So I'm just going to go through, I'll just show you one of them. I'm going to show you my risk communication class. So if I was looking for any information there, you would just click on risk communication. And this will bring you to the specific classes homepage. So it looks very similar to your overall homepage, but this is specific to your class that you're looking at. So you'll have your homepage, which is where we are now. Um, course information. This is a lot of times where professors will put the syllabus, the schedule, or just any other general information you need to know. Um, content. That is where your instructors will post your assignments. And again, this is subject to change for um, whatever professor, but generally this is what we're seeing. So content is going to be maybe where your readings are, or quizzes, or other assignments you have due. Your calendar that shows you like a month view of what that will look like. Um, discussion boards. So I will show you, I don't think we have any discussion boards, but this is where if your teacher says post on your discussions, you'll see a thread go down um, just with different comments, with different prompts. And then of course you have my grades and then help. So this is really what the Blackboard space looks like for most classes. Um, one thing I really want to encourage, there's two things. There is a Blackboard app, so you can have it on your phone. And this makes it really easy to be always checking, not always, don't, don't go crazy, but you can be checking your grades at any time. Um, it'll send you push notifications for when an assignment is posted, a grade is posted, or any updates. You can also, um, on the Blackboard website, you can set up notifications through email. So I'm going to show you how to do that. So you're going to go up here to where you see your name in the top right hand corner and you're going to click down, that down bar. And as you do that, you're going to go down here to settings. And then edit notification settings. And then it'll bring you to this page. So you're going to want to go to bulk edit notification settings. And then to this hyperlink down on here that says courses I'm taking. 
And this will bring you um, to a really, you can very customize what, your, what you want your notifications to look like. So you can do it by class or you can just set up individually. So as you can see here, these are all the different things I could get notifications for and you can turn it on where you want that notification. So your dashboard on Blackboard, your email, your mobile number, it's really up to you where you want to get those notifications, but this is, you can really customize what you want to see. And turning these on has really helped me not to forget any assignments or to make sure I was staying on top of things. So that this is a really helpful thing to have in the Blackboard space. Um, but I think that's about all with Blackboard. Um, again, some of our ambassadors will go a little bit more in depth on how Blackboard connects with other programs that you guys may be using. So you may hear more about it a little bit later, but that is Blackboard. Fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing that, Katie. I really also um, think it's important for students to turn on those notification settings. Um, even as an instructor, um, I used to teach COM 138. I teach the ambassador course. Um, and as an instructor, I turn on those notifications so I can see when students are commenting, when there's questions, or when something is due that I posted. Um, so those notifications are super important and can really be a, a lifesaver um, when you have a lot of courses in Blackboard, like I think a majority of students do uh, this semester. So thanks so much for going in and sharing about that. Um, she also pointed out another kind of neat piece of Blackboard, which is um, that the other platforms we're going to talk about a lot of times link through Blackboard. So it's nice that you can go to one location and then get to these other platforms that we're going to be talking about. Um, but besides Blackboard this semester, I think the most common platform that we're all using, including the one that we're using today to record this episode, is Zoom. Um, Zoom has been a great platform. It's free. Um, I've really had very limited technology issues with it, but we want to kind of see from the student side um, what tips and tricks um, we have for you. So Jane, I'm going to turn it over to you to talk a little bit about Zoom. I like to say that everyone has kind of become a Zoom expert overnight uh, with coronavirus, being quarantined, working from home. A lot of people know how to use Zoom. So I don't want to kind of bore you with some of the the normal things, how to sign in, that sort of thing. But as a student, sometimes you might face a little bit of difficulty or some hurdles that hopefully I can help you manage. And I'll just go over some personal experiences that I've had that have kind of given me some trouble and hopefully my faults uh, will not affect you in the slightest. So, hold on. Okay, so here's the Zoom login. So obviously I am using Zoom right now, so I can't show you the nice desktop one. But this is one very similar to one you'll be using. And what I usually like to do is sign in with a SSO. And that basically says that you are with an organization and all of you are. You are with WSU, you are with Murrow, so you will have an account linked to your WSU email. And the reason that it's so nice to have it linked to your WSU email is because you can get some really nice notifications through your WSU email outlook. So I have a few pulled up right here. Uh, most people have them all throughout the week. So this one that we're on right now, of course, we're talking about technology, tells me exactly what date, what time it starts. I can even add it to my calendar right here so it can kind of give me a little push notification, warn me about 15 minutes prior that you know we're about to go live, which is really, really helpful. But something that I recently learned is that you can actually see kind of important documents that you might want to review before you even jump on to Zoom. So Maybe you're going to work and there is a little pre-worksheet that you need to do before you sign on. Those are nice little things to know before you even jump onto the Zoom meeting. Also on Outlook, there are different uh, little things to see if there's been a cancellation for Zoom courses. A lot of communication is being done through email right now. So being really kind of email savvy and Zoom savvy kind of goes hand in hand. So seeing that, you know, for instance, an ambassador class was canceled or a student panel was canceled in my case, I could just simply click remove from calendar and I won't even be notified. So it'll automatically be uh, cleared out of my space, which is really, really nice. To link it back into Blackboard, a lot of professors are kind of going that extra mile and trying to make it as simple for their students to just join up on Blackboard as easy as possible. So I have some of my course information pulled up this is specifically for my media law class. We do meet on Zoom every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 8 a.m., which is fantastic. And here is the Zoom link right here. So all you have to do is click the Zoom link and you're automatically joined up with the class. Different courses may uh, require you to have your video on. Some may not. It kind of all depends on the professor. 
thankfully, my professor for my 8 a.m. class does not require us to have our video on, which we are very, very thankful for. Um, but, you know, a lot of the course information with Zoom will be on Blackboard. So it is kind of nice to have that, um, have that background knowledge as well. Some extra things about what Murrow is doing um, for Zoom. We're really utilizing it in really amazing ways, not only for courses, but also for broadcasting. We're using it uh, to produce weekly newscasts, everything of that sort. So Zoom is not just limited to just the classroom space. We're also using it to further our academics because we're going into a virtual world. So we have to be as prepared as possible. And Zoom is just another tool that us Murrow Kooks can use in our toolbox. And I'll pass it back to Mackenzie. That's kind of all we have for Zoom. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for sharing, Jane. Zoom is such an important platform for us this semester. I think everybody, um, if anything, has probably been a little Zoomed out. I actually heard President Kirk, Sol Kirk Schultz uh, describe it as Zoomitis. So I thought that that was um, a little appropriate. Um, but it's a great platform. Um, and um, like you kind of mentioned, there are two ways to kind of access Zoom, um, certainly through through Blackboard, but the two that I'm kind of specifically mentioning is there is a desktop application. So if you click on that, you can join a meeting, schedule a meeting, but really the settings are pretty limited on that desktop application. So if you're trying to edit your video settings, your chat settings, or anything like that, um, it's really better to go to wsu.zoom.us. Um, we have a whole... Um, you log in the same way, but there's a whole kind of settings area there. Um, you can go to advanced settings and it works really, really well even on the student side. Um, so I encourage you to check out both the desktop application piece as well as the website piece like Jane kind of mentioned. Um, but otherwise, yes, most of you guys are Zoom experts. We should probably have all of our current students talking to us about Zoom and kind of things that you figured out that work really well for you. Um, but otherwise, um, it's a great platform. We're excited to use it like uh, Jane said for classes, but also for extracurricular type things as well. So hopefully you guys don't have any Zoomitis cases. Um, but other than that, we do have a couple other platforms we want to talk about. And then I am going to be sharing some resources, uh, like I said, at the end, including Canvas. Um, and Canvas is essentially the, the a different version of Blackboard, um, which some of you may be using. Um, WCU is in the process of kind of migrating a lot of classes to Canvas. So some of you may be using that as well. And I want to share resources about that. Um, but next, I do want to go ahead and turn it over to Cameron, who's going to be talking to us about Top Hat. Sweet. All right. Let's talk about Top Hat, people. So Top Hat is um, a website and a mobile app. I'm going to go first into the website, and then we'll jump over to the mobile app. And I'll just tell you about it because I can't really share my screen right now with that. Here we are going over to Top Hat. So you can log in uh, with Top Hat just using your school, uh, that's actually really important. Uh, Top Hat will constantly ask you what school you're at, just so it knows where to categorize you. School email, password, making your account, all that good stuff. And I only have one class on Top Hat currently. Uh, dorm internet is still as fast as always. Um, so your professor will send you a access code or a join code. Don't, jo don't join my course, um, he'll know. Um, but Here's the access code that he sent me. Uh, they usually put it in the syllabus. They will use this right alongside Zoom. Um, this is kind of a way to take away clickers um, and integrate it more to an online phase. So for um, Top Hat, they can, uh, professors will take attendance, they'll use quizzes um, and all that. And they can assign homework through this application. So currently in my classroom, um, I don't really have anything going on right now, but I have 16 assigned homework, um, homework, homeworks. Yeah, we're just gonna say homeworks. Um, all sorts of stuff. You can see it all right here and it's uh, fantastic. Um, and then they do have a grade book as well that you can check. Um, mine has yet to be graded, but just so you guys can see what it looks like. And they have really nice transitions. I mean, steeping some tea, come on, that's classic. Um, I don't have anything up right now, as you can see. Now on the mobile app, um, I would highly advise getting this uh, because it's this entire website simplified on your phone. Um, so like I said, professors will use this to take attendance or to ask like pop questions or whatever it may be. Um, with that, you can just log straight onto your mobile phone. Um, of course, a mobile phone. And then through the app, you go through the same login process. So access code, school, WSU email, making your account, all that good stuff. 
Um, and then from there, you're able to answer questions and interact with the professor. It's a really good way for us as students to re-engage um, this semester. I know right now everything's really disconnected, but Top Hat's really helping um, join that together. Also, you can put notifications on for this app, um, which is very useful. So you can get badge, banners, um, home screen, whatever it may be, and emails, of course. Um, all those very useful, keeping you plugged into class, uh, keeping you attentive. I highly advise, like I said, getting it on your phone. Uh, that's like the first thing I would do. It's just top hat in the app store. Um, I don't know about Androids or what have you, but I know on iPhone, that's what it is. Um, definitely a good, um, a good website. Also, it does cost roughly $30 for about four months. So about a semester, it's $30. Um, very useful because if you're taking multiple courses that use Top Hat, it's only a one-time fee. You're not paying every single time for each new course, um, which is great. I am only using it for this class right now, but hopefully I can extend my membership to next semester if I'm using it. Fantastic. Thanks so much for sharing, Cameron. Um, Top Hat is a really common platform um, for a lot of our professors in the Murrow College um, for a couple of reasons. Um, the Murrow College actually teaches a lot of introductory communication courses like many of you are in, uh, COM 101, 102, 105, 138. And those are really large classes because students from across the university take those courses. It's not just Murrow students. So Top Hat is a really great way for our instructors to take attendance, post quizzes, um, and kind of have um, a place for students to go to check in, like Cameron said, even on the mobile app. Um, and actually, everything that we're talking about today does have a mobile app. I'll let Ariel kind of talk about um, the next platform and, and what options there are available with that. But Zoom, Blackboard, Top Hat, they all have mobile applications where you can turn on those notification settings. And I highly, highly recommend uh, that you do that. So then you can be reminded, you know, even if it's a Sunday night, maybe you forgot to check your assignments, your phone will remind you. So that's a really great way uh, to get those notifications. Um, but I do want to turn it over uh, to Ariel, who's going to share with us a little bit about Perusal. Thanks so much, McKinsey. I really appreciate it. And I also appreciate all of the ambassadors here for taking the time to share these different technologies. This is such a confusing time. So it's really great to have some people that are holding our hands and walking us through these things. So today I'm going to share about perusal. Um, many students that I've spoken to do not know what perusal is. So I'm gonna hopefully explain it a little bit better for you today. Alrighty, so you get through perusal, or at least I get through perusal through my Blackboard. Um, your professor should um, assign a link and give you all the information on how to sign up for it. Um, I did have to buy the textbook through perusal. I think I spent about uh, $80. So, you know, make sure to budget your, your money with that one. But um, it's pretty simple to just purchase. And then that way you have perusal and the um, textbook. So I'm going to make this really quick. So we, so the class that I use perusal for this semester is media law that's COM 415. So we'll go to my blackboard. And it's really nice because my professor has it laid out very easily. She has it very structured um, week by week, which is great for me because sometimes I can be a little unorganized. That's just a personal thing for me. All right, so we're going into unit two of the semester because that's what we're in. And so we'll go down to an assignment that's let's say that's due today, unit two application. So I click on that link, it takes me to another link, click on that one, and it takes me to perusal. So perusal, this is pretty much what you'll see most of the time. You don't need to know too much more of what it looks like. Usually the professor will have a link available for you. So here, my professor has it laid out. The Unit 2 application discussion, COM 415, Fall 2020. Simple enough. You've got directions up here. You should post a minimum of 20 comments directly to this document. And you are given four questions to answer with those 20 comments. It's not 20 comments per question for this assignment in particular, um, but the professor will usually um, make it very clear what the assignment is. I do recommend, it does say a minimum of 20 comments for this particular document make sure to go a little bit over that. You wanna be a little bit of an overachiever with perusal so you can get the best grade possible. And also it helps you learn a little bit more. Um, okay, so I'll basically go over some very simple ways to use perusal. So you can see there are some people trying to complete this assignment as it is due tonight. I already finished this assignment yesterday just so I don't have to worry about it, but that's neither here nor there. Okay, so if you wanna make a comment on a document, you simply, let's say, 
I want to make a comment here. I simply highlight it, click down and highlight. Let's say I just want to comment in that section. Your comment will pop up. Say that you wanted to just, I, I don't know, you just make a comment, blah, 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 right? You want to make sure that those comments are very specific to what you are talking about, but not too specific because perusal does track what your comments say. And if it's too specific, it might take it as plagiarism. Um, so you want to really make sure that you're paying attention to what you're saying and you're not just rewriting um, the sentence that you've highlighted. Um, this also helps you engage a little bit more instead of simply just, you know, writing something blindly, which happens sometimes when you have a lot of readings and which is okay. Um, but perusal does a great job in that um, you are focused on really learning the content. All right. Hang on just a second. Okay. So current conversation, right? You make the comment and then you press enter and it's there. Um, I'll just enter that and I'll delete it later. Nope, hang on. All right, so there's my comment. Um, hopefully my professor does not see that. All right, so let's say that we wanted to respond to someone's comment. Say they, you know, you really liked what they said here or you really don't understand. So if you really liked what they said, you press this little check mark and it'll turn green and that kind of uh, tells that person that um, you agree with them. But let's say that you have a question you click the question and to get more points and to um, to really further your understanding and you want to like talk with this person or have maybe a conversation over perusal about you know the document that you're discussing you press at and then her name this person's name should pop up right here and then you say I you like to say I really agree with you here or I don't quite understand what you're trying to say what do you mean by this um, but that's pretty much how you respond to a particular comment if you agree or disagree or you just don't know what they're saying. All right, so you exit out of that and that's pretty much how you make comments. It's very simple. Um, it's not too hard um, to do. Also, professors do a great job, especially at the Murrow College, um, of going over what you're supposed to do for like each assignment. Um, and you know different requirements and how to um, maybe get a higher score and that sort of thing. Um, the, Perusal is also great because it has different links throughout the document that can help further your understanding. Like not in this particular one, but sometimes if there's like a definition of a word and you don't really know what it is, you click on that link that it's linked to and it'll take you to the glossary where that definition is. And then you can just click this back button here, um, up here, you know, when you need to, to get back to the main document. So sometimes it's hard to keep track, for me at least, to keep track of how many comments I'm leaving because I don't want to leave too little and thinking I made more. So you go to my assignment progress, which is this little arrow on a graph down here. You click on that and it says I made 16, I started 16 conversations and I posted seven follow-up questions or you know comments and answers to other people's comments. That's great. I was a little bit of an overachiever on this assignment, trying to get the best grade possible and also trying to learn the most. So that's how you track your assignment progress. And if you really want to go back and look at your specific comments, but you can't really remember where they are because sometimes documents can be a little long, you go up to all comments up here, click it and click on my comments. You can see the number went down, but I did make comments in these highlighted spaces up here, more up here. And a little trick for anybody who is just starting out with perusal, make sure you actually go through the entire document because perusal will track um, if you just stayed at the top and didn't go any further, or if you you know just stayed in one spot. And then that looks like you're not reading the entire document, even if you did. So try and make comments wherever you can in the majority of places. Um, as far as notifications go for perusal, since mine is set up with Blackboard, I automatically get notifications on if someone has responded to my comment or if someone agrees or disagrees, that sort of thing. So I'll get a notification on my email saying perusal and then it'll say uh, so-and-so responded to your comment and you can see what they did. Um, and then there will be a link provided in that email and you can go back to those comments on that document. But that is pretty much it for perusal. It's very simple to use. Um, your professors will be more than happy to answer any questions you may have if it is a little bit confusing in the future, but I hope this helps. Great, thanks so much, Ariel. Um, perusal is um, one of those applications that a lot of times um, are 
sophomores, juniors, seniors tend to use. Um, I don't know if a lot of our first year courses are necessarily using perusal this semester, but it has been something that our Murrow College faculty has used even before we went virtual because of COVID-19. So it's a great time to go over that. Um, you guys probably will be using it in the future um, wherever you are in your academic progress. And I really appreciate Ariel kind of going over um, how to get those notifications, but also how to kind of get the best grade you can and learn the most from that program. Um, perusal really is a a way for uh, professors to kind of monitor if you're reading the material for the course, because I think a lot of students think, oh, I don't need to complete that reading. But a lot of times it can be really valuable to um, your learning and understanding of the material. So um, a lot of you should look forward uh, to using that one in the future if you're not already using it right now. Um, so that's a little bit from our ambassadors about those platforms that they're sharing today. We actually have another awesome guest speaker here with us today who has volunteered to show us Canvas, which is the kind of the um, counterpart to Blackboard. Like I said, we're kind of migrating from Blackboard to Canvas in the future, and a lot of you may be using Canvas. So I do want to turn it over uh, to Connelly, but kind of behind the scenes here to show us um, Canvas from even an instructor perspective. So Connelly, I'll turn it over to you. First off, I don't know uh, if I can live up to the way the students have demonstrated technology, but you guys did a great job. And we'd even pay them to say how great we are as faculty members with all this technology. So thanks for that. It's great to see the student view. We see from an administrative standpoint, we see the faculty side a lot, and we never really know how that translates uh, to, uh, to students and whatnot. But uh, I'm just going to give you like a quick overview of Canvas. To me, I have loved the transition from Blackboard to Canvas. I've used uh, Blackboard for four years, and uh, this is my first semester using Canvas. And uh, it's been, I think, from an uh, administrative and faculty standpoint, it's been great. And I think the students are slowly figuring out where things are compared to Blackboard and uh, some of you may have like be straddling both Blackboard and Canvas, and so um, sorry if you have to do that this semester. But I think once we make the transition to Canvas, I think everyone will be really, 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 really happy. All right, before I get into student view, uh, this is the faculty view uh, right now, uh, which is really close to the student dashboard. But before I get into that, just like all the other platforms, I think the most important part of Canvas and all of our uh, LMS learning management systems and Zoom and all that is notifications. Those are super important because they help uh, keep you connected to the course uh, through emails, text messages, uh, whatever uh, platform you want to use that service on. I think notifications are super important. And like Cameron said, for Top Hat, Canvas uh, also has an app, and I recommend getting that. Again, just to kind of open it up every day or open it up you know, three times a week to see, all right, this is what I got to do this week. So uh, they have an app uh, as well that um, that you can use this at. So when you are talking about, talking about notifications to turn them on, if you log into Canvas, right where it says account, left side, boom. Uh, super simple, that's what I love about Canvas, where you think it should be, that's probably where you're gonna find that feature at. So uh, here you go, account, notifications, and uh, my notifications will look a little different than yours, but you ha kind of have an idea of, uh, of what you can. So like everything that is part of Canvas, you can either get a email notification or you can get, uh, if you have the app, you can get that notification as well and you can control it all from the desktop um, program under account notifications. But uh, please make sure you check that. And uh, you can get one once a day. You can get one when something updates. So it's up to you of how much you want to personalize it. But you should definitely turn on notifications again. In Canvas, it's account and then notifications. All right, so let me jump into one of my classes. Uh, this is just Comdure 390, and uh, I'll put it in student view so you have an idea of uh, what it looks like when you uh, get into there. It's Like I said, it's very similar to the faculty side, but uh, there's a few things I would love to point out. So in Canvas, the thing that you have to know is that each faculty member has the flexibility to lay out the page the way they want to. And I think that's kind of, uh, to me, the most exciting part of Canvas. I think for students, it may be a little um, uh, frustrating at first, just because this middle sec this uh, Canvas is laid out in three sections, the uh, toolbar here, and then you have uh, another bar here, and then you have the middle section. This middle section is totally customizable, and the uh, instructor uh, or professor can make that look however they want to, 
But if you kind of know where to look in Canvas, you can kind of um, stumble around until you figure out uh, how that professor is laying out uh, that course. So on the left side, you'll have all your quick links for the course. Uh, these, again, are customizable per, per um uh, faculty members so maybe uh, they don't want you to see people or quizzes they can hide that but for the most part your uh, toolbar that gives you all the quick links are on the left side of the screen if you ever need to get to a quick menu there's the uh, or get rid of it so that it's you're only seeing uh, the middle part just click on again the three lines just like you normally would with any other website so that's what I love about canvas is it it really uh, emulates uh, a real website and how that works and they kind of worked it into this manager management system which is great so left side is your menu in this middle section this is uh, where all the content goes so you can see my home page I always have this banner up here so that students know exactly what page they're on and then uh, here I have a video I embed a video every week about what's happening in the course some faculty members will do that some don't but I like to do it so I uh, send my classes announcements uh, through canvas as well as post a video so uh, they can get that information however they want to get it so I have my video here and you can see it's just nicely embedded again just like a regular web page which is nice and then under that I have uh, quick links to uh, the different modules that I uh, have in this class and so the thing that you're really gonna have to know about canvas is you're gonna live in for the most part modules announcements grades and quizzes so those are like the four main quick links on the left side that you're always going to get to. For my classes, I always try to put everything they need to know on this homepage. So if they don't remember, gosh, where do I find my weekly stuff? They don't need to be like, oh, it's under modules. They can just go to the homepage and say, all right, we're in week five and then click on it and then it'll take them to week number five. Uh, I also have like a, a, a Padlet uh, bulletin board here and um, uh, information for them to contact me on the home page again every faculty member will have this but the great thing about canvas is it lays out just like a web page which is super super cool on the far right side and this is your to-do list and that's the part I love about canvas especially for students is that if your uh, faculty member uh, instructor puts an assignment or a quiz or anything like that uh, as soon as it publishes it'll pop up in your to-do list. And so it'll sort it by the due dates. And you can see uh, this is the sample uh, version of um, uh, Canvas. So I didn't turn in some assignments. And so that's not, that's not good. But it'll say, hey, you got a week three announcement. Once you click on that, boom, it goes away. Or you can just simply hit an X and that goes away. And so everything you have to do, if there's a new post or a new lecture that you haven't seen yet, it's going to put it in this to-do list. And then as soon as you do it, uh, it'll go away. So that's great. It's another great way to stay organized um, on Canvas. So if I just go into a module, you can see that my modules are broken up by week. Again, every faculty member will do it different. Some of them will have unit numbers or whatnot. I found it easier to lay out my week uh, the same way every week and then just put the content the content there. So you can see uh, I have one lecture for them to watch this week. There are two assignments for them to do and then there are my Zoom links there. If I click on a, a lecture, again, it's, it's, it's pretty sweet because it looks exactly like a web page. So I have my uh, header here. I have my YouTube lectures here. I have a few YouTube links that they could watch um, as supplemental stuff. And then uh, right down here is embedded uh, the slide deck for this lecture that I gave on lighting. And then uh, below that, another slide deck uh, for it looks like part number four of my lecture, another YouTube video. And then these are my quick link buttons that I use. But again, some faculty members won't do that or don't do that or do it a little differently. So you have to play around. But this middle column is super, uh, super great. And so uh, you can see those quick links right there. If you see on Canvas next, this next refers to what's next in that uh, module that you're currently in. So if a faculty member does like a weekly module or they do like a unit one module, next is just the next either page or assignment. So if I click that, it's going to show me the assignment that I have due this week. And then it lays that out, you know, just like um, just like it should. So I love Canvas. 
Um, like I said, I used Blackboard for about four years, and this semester was my is my first semester using Canvas, and it is fun to play around with and, and lay the course out, but it's super flexible because if something's not working, students will let me know and be like, all right, well, let's just shift things around to make things as easy for you to find as possible. So uh, I hope that was semi-helpful in the uh, quest to learn about Canvas, but notifications, huge thing, and then just trying to figure out uh, how your faculty member lays out um, their course. So I'll turn it back to Mackenzie and never be on the show again. I'm going to pull Connolly into multiple episodes because that was super helpful and we really, really appreciate your perspective as both, you know, faculty, um, but also having that student perspective on a platform that not all of our students are using yet. Um, I don't have my courses on Canvas yet. Um, I hope to eventually. Um, and I think as we kind of migrate slowly, students will see the reason why we're choosing Canvas over Blackboard. And it does just give faculty members and students a little more flexibility about where they're posting things and how they organize their course. Um, I do want to blanket statement say that with all of these platforms, every instructor is going to organize their course a little bit different. So if you are following along with Katie or Cameron or uh, Connolly today, just keep in mind that it might look different for you, but you can't break the system. So I encourage you to go click through absolutely everything on these platforms. If you make a mistake, let your instructor know. But otherwise, I would click through, see what you can learn about your platform and maybe other tips and tricks that you can share with us, because we'd love to see those additional um, resources that you guys are using to be successful. Um, so to kind of close out this video, I do want to share some resources. I'm going to share my screen now um, as a, as a um, Mural Student Services employee. I definitely want to show you resources. That's what I'm all about. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up um, my screen here. I will go ahead and share with you guys. Um, all right, here we go. So lots of good resources um, that I want to share and we'll post links to all of these later. Um, but what I do want to show you first is um, this student guide, which is located um, at our teaching toolboxes. Again, the link will be posted here with us. Um, and really, we created this page, the AOI office created this page um, for students, um, you know, going through this with COVID-19. So um, the live trainings have passed for fall 2020, but if you scroll down, they've also got tips on Blackboard, Zoom, um, how to record um, assignments and some additional resources. Um, there's also um, links to the Crimson Service Desk, which is if you need to reset your password or one of these platforms is not working for you, you definitely wanna contact this office. Um, unfortunately, I can't help reset your password and neither can your academic advisor or faculty member. So you do need to contact the Crimson Service Desk for questions like that. Um, the really big piece that I like about this is there is a frequently asked questions component. So if you click on this, um, it pulls up a lot of different um, questions that students have been asking us this semester um, for equipment, student support, Zoom calls, um, Blackboard, Panopto, which is, an, I think, um, that's how you pronounce it. And I think a lot of students are using that this semester as well. Um, lots of other ones are listed here, so feel free to check out this page. Um, another one that we have is the Coogs Online Toolkit. Again, we'll post this link for you as well. Um, this is for faculty, staff, and students, so some of this may not apply to you as students, um, but you can see that there are um, a, there's a Teams link for those of you using Microsoft Teams, uh, which students have access to. Uh, Zoom, uh, the WSU mobile app, which if you guys aren't using that, um, that's a great one as well. You can see your class schedule, you can see your grades, um, you can add and even drop courses from that app, and you can view your financial aid information. Um, so that's a great mobile app to have as well. Um, but otherwise, Crimson Service Desk contact information, as well as some other work guidelines for our faculty and staff. Um, so another link that I do want to share um, is brand new to the Murrow College, and it is our WSU Murrow College Families Facebook page. So for those of you that have heard of the WSU Parents page, we actually get a lot of traffic on there for the Murrow College because our students and parents are engaged with us um, and love asking us questions, and we love answering those questions. So we created our own page. It's brand new as of this week, um, but we have multiple people monitoring this page to answer your questions. So if you or your parent or a friend has questions about technology or advising or really anything Murrow related, this is a great place to post that. Um, we have ambassadors on that page. We have faculty and staff on that page ready and available to answer your questions. So don't hesitate to reach out to us uh, through that platform as well. And then finally, 
I do want to share. Um, obviously, our advising drop-in hours and our virtual lobby um, in case you have questions for your academic advisor. Um, they're a great, great resource to talk to you about time management, um, to talk to you about study tips, testing tricks while we're all online virtually uh, for COVID-19. Um, so I just want to share how to get to those resources from our website. Again, we'll post that link here at the end of this video for you. Um, but if you go to the Murrow College website, it's just murrow.wcu.edu. You click on the student experience because you're a student and you want to have an experience. Um, and then you just go to the Murrow Center for Student Success. And if you want to talk to somebody right now, you, you need help scheduling an appointment, you're confused about something, you just need help, all you do is click on this virtual lobby and Rose, our office manager, will be there to assist you. Uh, she can help you schedule appointments with your advisor. She can direct you to the right office if you have questions about financial aid or resetting your password. Um, they are open from eight to five, closed noon to one for lunch, so keep that in mind. But otherwise you click this link, you join in um, by using that password and they'd be happy to help you. Um, you can also view all of our announcements for this semester on this page as well. Um, some other announcements here and then more about the fall advising drop-in hour. So if you have specific advising questions, your advisors are available um, at that time. So those are the resources that I wanted to share with you. Um, I'll go ahead and stop sharing my screen. Um, there are a lot of other resources out there. You can certainly view the Blackboard, Canvas, and Zoom um, instruction manuals that they post on their own websites. But I hope today you were able to learn from a lot of our students about how they're using this day in and day out. Um, it's not just our first year students that got moved virtually, it's all of our current students as well. So they got kind of moved um, as well, like I said, and they're using these platforms maybe in new ways that they hadn't before. So we're really excited that they were able to show and share with you. Um, but we also realize that you may have additional questions. So post on our Facebook page, contact me, contact one of these awesome ambassadors whose contact information is also on the Murrow website, and we'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, the big, big thing that I hope I can really um, focus in on today and kind of get across is that we want you to ask questions to us before it's too late, right? Quote, too late. And what I mean by that is we don't want you to fall behind in your courses or not understand how to access information and then it, have it be too late um, to pull up your grade or to be successful. So if you have questions about these platforms or about how to be successful, reach out to us now and we'll help kind of get you connected and get you the resources that you need. So with that, I just have one more reminder before we close out this episode, and that is that we are still um, going through our Murrow Cribs um, uh, posting competition this month. So for those of you that want to post on our social media, the Murrow College social media, um, and share your virtual space with us, whether it's your uh, room decor, whether it's your awesome um, technology setup, we're voting for winners on who has the best kind of virtual space, and you could potentially win some pretty awesome prizes from us. Um, so I hope that you take the time to um, go explore that and get the chance to interact with us that way. Um, but otherwise, uh, the next episode of Murrow Minutes Goes Virtual that we have coming up is going to be awesome. Um, it's going to be all about preparing for the Career Expo, which is going to be virtual at the beginning of October. So on that next episode, we're going to have Angela Schweiger, our professional development coordinator here with us as a guest speaker. Um, and we're also going to have some ambassadors talk about their internship experiences. So hopefully we can help prepare you for that virtual Career Expo coming up, which you can learn more about on our advising website. Um, but other than that, um, I do want to go ahead and close out our episode today. I'd, like I said, um, feel free to go through all the different timestamps in this video to learn about the different platforms that we have. Contact us with any questions. And as always, stay safe, stay healthy, and go Cougs!